Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Saturday the 16th of August and it's day 59 on the allotment. There's been lots of things happening on the allotment. Uh, I've been uh, gathering crops of uh, broad, uh, not broad beans, I've been gathering crops of runner beans. I've been gathering crops of French beans. Now, I, w I was talking to Halvor um, of uh, Gardening in Norway and uh, if you're not subscribed to that channel, please do. It's amazing what Halvor does over there. Um, and uh, he was saying that the, the variety of um, French climbing bean that I'm growing, which is Blue Lake, um, was the variety that he was growing for the first time. And he said that uh, they were the most tasty uh, beans that uh, he'd ever tasted. And uh, now that we've cooked a few, I have to agree, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I will definitely uh, be growing Blue Lake again. So uh, really, really pleased that uh, I've inadvertently discovered that one. <laughs> well, uh, let's take a look around because uh, there's lots that I can show you. <laughs> Well, the first thing to notice is that the greenhouse is still here. We uh, got hit with uh, uh, the remnants of uh, Hurricane Bertha and I was convinced I was going to come back and uh, this was going to be an ex-greenhouse with everything all over the place. But uh, yeah, there was less damage than on previous storms. So uh, that very much pleased me and also really surprised me. So uh, yeah, very happy to still have a greenhouse. Well, we're now in the greenhouse and uh, you can see we've got one or two chilies, but most of them have been picked. But uh, the ones that have been picked, you've got more flowers coming. And uh, moving across here, some of this year's are starting to flower as well. So it is possible that I might even get some chilies from this year's plants. Some of them need a drink. Some of them uh, have uh, not quite liked the heat. But uh, overall, yep. Things doing well, and I've certainly got some candidates here of uh, chilies that I can overwinter. The cucumbers don't really like the heat in here, but I don't know if you can see this, I have got more cucumbers on the way, and these do grow unbelievably quickly. You see, here's one. It's not quite ready, but uh, this time tomorrow it may well be. You have to keep an eye on these cucumbers so much because they just appear out of the blue. That was the wind blowing this greenhouse. It is standing up, but uh, it's, uh, it's a bit of a Herculean effort for it to stand up to this buffeting. But uh, so far, so good. One of the other things I can show you is that certainly one of my sunflowers is out, and you can see that the other one is out as well. Now, in the previous storm, a couple of weeks ago, um, my uh, sunflowers got flattened, and you can see I, I tied up uh, a couple of them. There's this one in the middle, and you know, he certainly has ambitions to be a Russian giant. They're not, but uh, he's certainly uh, approaching two metres now, and uh, the others are well over a metre each. So uh, really happy to have sunflowers, and I'm hoping that uh, I'll have some sunflower seeds as well that uh, I can use uh, to, uh, to, to bake with. So uh, yeah, very happy about that. Well, you can see that uh, my giant pumpkin is uh, growing again. That is now much bigger than my head. Um, it's, uh, crikey, uh, I would say probably a foot across at the moment. So uh, really hopeful for what he can become. Just as I convinced myself that I was doing this all wrong with my other pumpkins, and I, I think I've, I've worked out that, because I didn't know that there are two sorts of pumpkin there is a vine variety, which my first one is, but there's also a bush variety. And uh, that's what this one is. But can you see? This is from out of nowhere. There's a pumpkin on this one. There's actually two pumpkins on this one. You can see in here that uh, I have a pumpkin on this one as well, in here. So I've got pumpkins all over the place. All of my pumpkins uh, are now on. They have pollinated. Thank you very much to Dan for explaining to me about pollination of pumpkins and uh, what you have to do. I did take your advice and uh, I'm really pleased to say that it's worked. So uh, looks like we're going to have some pumpkins. This is another view of my sunflowers as you can see. 
One of them's up tracing the sun across, another one's just about to wake up, and this one is getting very close to coming out as well. So uh, yeah, very happy with these sunflowers. I'm stepping back a bit to show you this. Um, I have been pulling pounds and pounds and pounds of runner beans off these plants. And the more that I pull off, the more that there are, and the bigger they're getting. Um, I'll show you the reveal from today, um, towards the end of this video. Um, but uh, they are really, really coming along, and also the Blue Lakes, there's lots of those to pull off, and there's more every time I come here. But as we move along here, there's something else happening as well, which is that in here, I don't know if you can see, but uh, I'm starting to get bolotti beans as well coming through, and these are a lovely size. Now I know that Dave was saying that with his bolotti beans, what do you do? Well, there's three ways to eat bolotti beans. When they're like this, you can eat them um, like they are runner beans, so or French beans or whatever. So uh, just boil them up um, in the skins the way that they are. When they go completely red, so that there's no green left on them, then it's best to shell them and eat them as you would butter beans. And then finally, when they go, um, the shells start to dry, they'll still be a red, but they'll dry and uh, will be utterly no good for anything. Now at that point, the beans are also dry, and you can use them then in soups and casseroles uh, in much the same way as you would um, dried uh, kidney beans but of course they don't have the quinine in. So those are the three ways that I know of that you can eat bolotti beans and I'll be picking these today to go home with. These are my leeks and some of these are actually starting to uh, look like proper sized leeks. This one here in the middle is probably my best one. Now, it's two weeks before our village show, and I have always been wondering, you know, would I have a leek ready or not? And, uh, well, there's another couple of weeks, so if these put on the same kind of spurt that they have been, I might even have a leek for the show. Uh, we don't take things as seriously in our village as uh, um, sort of the, the big growers' competition in Harrogate and the others that I know some of you go in for. This is much more um, a case of, look, but uh, we grew something and it wasn't a total disaster. But uh, hopefully I might have something to put in there and if I do, I'll film it. My peas have now finished and uh, I'm going to be pulling these out today. So uh, that's one of my tasks. I've, I've let some of them actually uh, go over and uh, that was very naughty of me because they were be beautiful peas. But I certainly got some. What I have noticed is that this um, net for them to grow in um, and up yeah, that wasn't big enough. They need to be a good four or five foot uh, for this particular variety. And I want to grow this variety again. So uh, that's a learning experience for me. And the reason that they've gone over is because uh, I couldn't really get and scramble inside the net to uh, find them all. And it's only as uh, the others have uh, sort of died back that I can now see what I didn't get. But uh, as I say, a learning experience and I'll do better with these next year. Now, one of the things that I've been uh, talking about recently is because, yeah, sort of, I, I wanted more space to grow things this year. Uh, well, what happened is that um, whilst I was here recently, actually during the week, the membership secretary came up to me and uh, asked me to uh, consider something. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to say to you what he said to me. And I would love to know what you think. So here's my plot, and uh, you can see sort of the greenhouse. It's not a very big plot, but let me take you for a walk down here. Now, I, I don't usually do this and show you other people's plots, because I do think that everyone's got a right to privacy. So I'm not actually going to tell you who owns any of these or how they're doing or anything like that. I'm just going to take you for a wander down past the, uh, the water trough. We do have water on this site, which is uh, really useful. So I'm going to take you down to here. Now, you can see this is one corner of a plot and it's really overgrown. We've got cooch grass here. Um, we do have some things growing, but uh, they've largely bolted. 
Um, the couch grass is growing up really tall. Um, there's also some bindweed issues. Uh, moving up here, we've got a squash or a pumpkin, which uh, looks as if it needs a little bit of attention. And uh, but you know, it's growing. It's big. Um, there's definitely sort of good soil down here. And the people that have been working this now, I saw that it had been worked a little bit last year. And I've seen them come down here two or three times this year. Now, that doesn't mean that, of course, that's the only time they've ever come down. It's just that those are the only times I've seen them. They've got stuff growing. So here we've got some raspberries. Um, in amongst, I think we've got some mare's tail there as well. But, you know, there's things growing and there's things that need to be pulled out. They've set up you know, all of their compost bins and there's a, a water barrel and there's some more raspberries along here. So at some point, this plot has actually had an awful lot of love. There's a bench. This is a feature that I love, even though I'm not sure I'd be able to make any use of it, um, which is the hazel arch that goes all along here. So we've got beds on the right of it, and uh, we've also got beds on the left. And you see that they're all overgrown as well. So the whole thing is overgrown. Now, I've been offered this plot because uh, the people that were here, they're, they're giving it up. And there's so much that I think I can do with this. This is actually twice the size of my plot. We just come out through the hazel arch, which, I mean, it's really pretty. And then I take you to the corner, the other corner of the plot. So you get an idea now of the size. The only thing is, I can't step on this plot until April next year and do something with it because that's how long they've leased the plot for but in April I mean I don't really want to be standing on this in April when it's been going to seed for winter and spring to begin clearing it what I want to do is to start planting things then so what I think I'm going to ask them is yeah, you know, whether the current owners because I don't believe they're going to be back this season whether the current owners would consider giving it up, you know, sort of in October so that I can start to clear it away and pay for half a year. Now, if I can get the committee to agree to that, then this will be my plot. Well, there is certainly lots there for me to be getting on with and I really need to do that. Um, but just before I do, um, there is somebody very special watching this. Her name is Eva, and uh, she's sitting at home right now with her daddy, and uh, they're both watching this. Now, Eva, your daddy wrote to me and said that you really enjoy these videos, and that makes me really happy that you enjoy them. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely um, over the moon that you watch these and that you enjoy them. Um, so uh, your daddy asked me to say hello to you so uh, hello Eva but uh, I really need your help now because I need to figure out what to do next so why don't you tell me what to pick tell me what to pick right now and I'll see if I get it right talk to you in a second well Eva if you said beans then you were right and I got it right as well which makes me happy if you did. Did you? What I've got here is three different sorts of beans. This one here is uh, the Bolotti beans and uh, these are quite young so I'll be able to eat these a little bit like runner beans. Then there are the runner beans and these are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, see this one here that is well over a foot long um, and then we've also got the Blue Lake beans here as well and uh, these are doing fantastic. All of these have been absolutely delicious and this is my best haul yet of beans. Well what I've got here is uh, one of my main crop Golden Wonder. So uh, I took the tops off um, with the, the blight so uh, they've had a, um, about a week, a uh, bit, bit more than a week to, to get a skin on them so what I thought we'd do is uh, we'd do a potato reveal and see what we get. Well, here is the reveal. Um, 
There's certainly a lot of them, but uh, if you see, if I pick them up, they're not very big. I mean, there are bigger ones than that, but uh, they're, they're just sitting at the top of my hand. Quite evidently, um, I've pulled them out too early, so uh, they needed longer, but of course, they were a bit blighty. Uh, I think also, possibly, because they were in the coir, they didn't grow as much. Um, they were topped up with leaf mould, and initially they had uh, fish blood and bone, and some chicken manure put in with them. So uh, they did have feed, but uh, overall, I mean, this is a very late crop of potato golden wonder, so uh, it was always going to be a risk. And uh, certainly as far as, the far, as, as far as the first bag goes, it doesn't look as if it worked. But uh, we'll try another one and see how that did in the compost. So here we are with the uh, second bag of Golden Wonder. This one was grown in the compost, um, earthed up with leaf mould. It had some chicken manure and some fish blood and bone as fertiliser put in. So uh, let's see what we get. Well here's the, the bag now emptied. I do like these green bags because they've got the handle on the bottom which makes it so much easier to empty these out. Um, the compost looks nice and wet. It's just a case now of seeing how many uh, potatoes we've got in there. So let's give it a go. And there is the reveal. Now, if I come closer in, there are some that are bigger. Yeah, we've got uh, one here that uh, fills my hand. Uh, but I do think that this is a bit of a tale of what might have been. There's certainly lots of them, and from one bag, I, I mean, it's definitely my best haul. Uh, I was just really hoping they could have been bigger. See in the corner there, we've got the seed potatoes. I think they are still going to taste really good, and apparently they make amazing roast potatoes. And roast potatoes, you know, with roast chicken or roast pork, that is my favourite thing in the world. So... Uh, Maybe uh, there is some roasts in my near future. <laughs> we'll see. And with that, that really does bring us to the end of the day. There's actually a bit of a storm coming in, so uh, I've got to gather everything up. It's been a fantastic harvest today. Um, it's a shame that the potatoes weren't as big as I hoped they were, but uh, there's certainly lots of them and they're going to taste delicious. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye.